Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Everybody Eats Show, international version. So this is probably the, this is the third international, fourth, and technically fourth, fourth, if you count fifth, because we did one in Barcelona, one in France, PR Jamaica here. So this is five. Third with Allen though. Third with Allen. Third with Allen. Fifth international. Everybody eats going global. Um, we are in the beautiful city of Cartagena, Colombia. Boys trip, you know, we have to get an episode off. So we have a good one for you today. So I'm like Steve Harvey. Um, but Mr. Alan Joseph. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you for being on the episode today. Thanks for having us. Legacy guest. Legacy yeah. guest. Um, so do we have any housekeeping items that we want to talk about? Um, no, nothing new. More episodes coming on the way, uh, for sure. Um, Shout out to the people who've been asking us about like, oh, I haven't seen you guys post on Instagram as much, like where the episodes are at. Um, life happens, right? Life just happens, but I do appreciate people checking in on us and people um, like asking like what's going on because it just shows that they care and at least that they know this. So I appreciate you guys, but no worry, we do have more episodes on the way. Um, we have some things planned in the 757 area for the summer, so be on the lookout. Besides that, this is going to be a um, pretty good episode. Just want to talk about a few things and then we'll get it rolling. So, first things first, Colombia, right? We want to do like a little review, a little Yelp review on the experience on Colombia, right? So, um, we were in Medellin for a couple days. Um, we didn't go paragliding because these two guys were scared. I'm still tight. But we had a good time in Medellin. <laughs> so, we had a good time in Medellin. Um, different. Uh, but it was fun, and then we had some couple days here in Cartagena. Um, I don't know, I want you to go first. So, like, yeah. how you feeling? Favorite, not favorite, things that surprised you? Just, like, what's your thoughts um, on the trip, on that being on Cartagena? I'm going to keep it open-ended. Um, yeah, so I would say that uh, I really like, my favorite part was the Guatape tour that we did. Um, which is basically, like, a, a mountain, big rock. It's not even a mountain. I, Actually, backtrack. It's a mountain. I had to pick that. That's like the third biggest third rock. Third biggest rock in the world. Yeah, yeah. And that was like a really dope experience. Our guide gave us like the history of the area, um, how you know the rock got to be named El Peñol, and then um, the ownership and. That was a really dope experience. It was a rough walk, especially I'm a bigger guy, you know, so I had to take a couple breaks. <laughs> I was sweating throughout. <laughs> um, but the, the, once it, <laughs> Help! Uh, but once you get to the top, it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. The view, um, they had drinks up top, so it was really cool and to nice to just chill up there for a bit and just catch up and enjoy the moment. So was it, it, was, it wasn't 700 steps, it was 700, Plus fifty meters. No, it's so hundred plus steps. Really? Like on the on the but ground. I, I thought that was. I saw. I could have sworn I saw M after them. So I was like, nah, these nah. meters, like. Because they mentioned, or like Seb said, seven hundred plus steps. The dude mentioned. Someone else mentioned seven hundred plus steps, and then oh, I saw okay. the numbers on the on the ground. Yeah. Okay. So it was like 25, 50, 100, yeah. 150, whatever, and keep on going until. Um, and, and it's not only a lot of steps, it's very like narrow. Like, yeah, you yeah. really have to yeah. watch where you're walking each, each step of the way, literally. Yeah. Coming down, I think, was even more wild though. Coming down, yes, yeah. your legs are right. done and you yeah. have to like control. Yeah. I'm a size right. 13. <laughs> Those steps only fit either, uh, the best was half of my foot. Yeah. Right? Most of them were like, like, one third of them. Yeah, that sideways so walk. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sideways side walk. Down. So the, I would say and, that. Oh, sorry. Oh no, and, and like the, the the part that really tripped me out because I'm if I'm being honest, I was winded after 50 steps. But like obviously, I you catch a second wind and everything. Mm -hmm. But that altitude is crazy. Like it actually really does make a difference. Like I was breathing and I noticed I was getting a lot less air than I normally do, even when I was standing. So that joke was intense. I thought it turned to stone after a little while. It was kind of just had to numb the pain out for me. It yeah. Was like, after probably after like 50, 100, I was like, all right, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no this is what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. So it was like, for me, it was like, if I stop and think about it, that's when all the pain hits. So I just have to just go, 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 go. I'll worry about the pain later. Yeah. But it was OD. But yeah, it's my fault. Keep going. No, that was my favorite, I think, out of all the <laughs> excursions slash tours that we did. Yeah. I would say that was my, my favorite. That was my highlight. 
Premiere 13 was really cool. I, I like that a lot. Just being able to take pictures of all the graffiti and really just walking through the entire neighborhood and getting to know the place and everything. History. And really just seeing how the people live. Like, you know, even though I'm sure it's a bit touristy, but you still, while you're walking, you still, you're walking through people's houses. They have their, you know, those metal doors and stuff. People just chilling in living rooms, looking outside, talking. You know, it's regular neighborhood stuff. Everything is just, you know, a lot different. It's just interesting seeing how people live. I felt like I was in a movie, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that too. Um, it's kind of hard. Guatapé was more fun. Like, I kind of like the adventure of going to a different city and the whole, like, the whole thing. But Community 13, like, I did like just being among people. I think when I when I travel, that's one of the one things I, I really love is just like being able to live amongst the people, be amongst the people for a little bit. It just feels a little bit more genuine as opposed to like, you know, like when you go to an all-inclusive resort and you're just in one place um, for, for the whole time. So um, that's why I like the Community 13, like you said, just seeing people's houses, people living their regular lives, you just walking through. That was cool, but about to pay like the scenery, the whole that adventure of it. That was mm -hmm. um, that was super fun. So um, shout out to our tour guide for Caribbean the Thirteen. Um, I don't even remember his name, but Alex. 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 Shout out to Alex. Tour guy, rapper, artist, 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 graffiti artist. He makes beers. Makes, makes beers. beers. That's a cool. businessman. So yeah. I, I, I like Alex. Shout out to Alex. Um, yo, the whole like neighborhood and everything really reminded me of like you know those movies like uh, only one that's coming to me is like uh, Aquaman when they were trying to go find the trident and they were getting chased and they were like jumping on those roofs of the buildings and running through I fell asleep they were, I know I fell asleep too yeah. <laughs> but it was somewhere in the middle but it just gave yeah. me one of those vibes like in those chase scenes where they're in another country and stuff yeah. and they're like running on roofs and stuff and jumping and and falling through roofs. Falling through roofs and doing those, roofs. Yeah. Roofs and yeah. those combat rolls. So that's what yeah. that stuff really was the yeah. vibe. It gave me like what Fast and Furious, what four? Yeah. Fast four, fast five when they're in Brazil? Yeah. Like, the, whatever that yeah, was. The favelas? The favelas. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what that's really what I think it was in like a Bad Boys one or two also. It was in yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and I was saying like it reminded me of like Haiti too, like there's like neighborhoods. I mean I'm sure you have neighborhoods and things like that yeah, all over the world, right? right? Where we've been, but yeah, it's where we've been. Um, so in, in Haiti, like just a similar vibe, just houses on top of each other, just like going up and people walking up alleyways, tight now or alleyways. What's crazy, I'm trying to imagine at night, there were definitely no lights. <laughs> there yeah. were, right? It's probably the lights on people's crib, maybe like, you know, like where the escalators were, probably mm -hmm. no lights, you know, those very central, lighting. Yeah, 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 probably no central areas, but. Um, I'm sure you keep the lights on after a certain point, you make yourself a target. Sorry, you're <laughs> right? But, um, it's just crazy thing, like, yo, people, like, grow up here, live here, and things like that, so, um, I don't know, big among the people, that was fun. Um, I know, about Crack that, in. anything else on energy? No. Uh, the weather, the weather, I guess it was a lot cooler. A lot cooler. A lot cooler, a lot cooler compared to, like, Cartagena. Yeah. Um, being in the mountains. I know you yeah. said, I don't know if you want to talk about like the buildings being oh, on the mountains. That, yeah, that still, yeah. that still trips me out because again, like when we went to, um, I don't know, I think when we went to like Utah or like Salt Lake City or something like that, like the city is like in the valley or like, and then the mountains are in the background. Like you think of like LA, all right? Like here's the city, mountains in the background. Or like, it's just usually cities in the valley, but the, when you, as soon as you leave the airport, you get out of the five mile tunnel, and then you get a whole panoramic of the city and it's just the houses on the mountains, in the valleys, up back up the mountains, just holds like spread it out throughout the whole. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful. beautiful. Like, and what I really liked was uh, during our walking, like especially during the walking tour when we were driving and whatnot, when you look back to see the distance and what you covered, one, it doesn't feel like you walked too much, but it's also like, hey, I was just there, you know, yeah. like yeah. on that part of the, whether you be higher or lower, you're like, hey, I was just there. And it kind of feels like, wow, I crossed this much, but it didn't feel like anything, you know? So yeah. that, that to me was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, where we stayed, area was pretty cool. Um, it's cheap that's over right. here. So as an American, the dollar goes pretty far. So that's pretty cool. That was really convenient. The first vacation I ever experienced that, so that was really Yeah. So cool. the, the burger spot we had was good stuff. Yeah, it was good, good stuff. Um, but yeah, that was Medellin, so good stuff. And then Cartagena. Um, Cartagena, a lot of people say it's like a Miami vibe, and that's exactly what it is. It feels like a Miami, San Juan, like 
a lot of beach towns or like beach touristy beach cities are built the same and have the same type of vibe. Um, so you know, white buildings along the beach, and you have people selling you things like everywhere. You know, so that's one thing I did like about Medellin better because Medellin felt more like a city. When I was saying before, I was like, I didn't feel like I stood out in Medellin. Everyone was kind of too busy minding their own business that you didn't really feel like a tourist as much. Granted, like, you know, in certain spots they can spot you, but for the most part, you just feel like you're just chilling down the street. Here in Cartagena, you can't hide that. The minute you nothing. Look, <laughs> the minute you look in someone's direction. Go to my shop. My friend. My friend. My friend. My friend. My friend. Oh, my goodness. You want money? You want money? You can't, oh. can't go anywhere. Magnolia? Esposa? Holy. <laughs> so, um, so it's still a beautiful city and all that, but, like, that's just a different vibe, you know? Like, you're going to get that most, uh, I'm sure most beach cities and things, uh, touristy yeah. cities, you're going to get that same vibe. People harassing to buy their souvenirs. Um, whereas the city vibes are just more like, everyone's too busy minding their own lives, so you just chill. You really downplaying this panhandling and, and making It really vibes. affected you. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, no, you uh, really downplaying it. I had well, a That joint <laughs> was, so, was so annoying. Yeah. So annoying. They don't, no does not mean no here. No means let me try it one more time. Are you sure? No means. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? Are they you ask you like three more times to confirm, bro. Yeah. I don't know. And some of them follow you. Some yeah. Them follow you. Blocks. Oh, yo, yesterday they were playing some good music. Yeah. The, the dudes who were following us on the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> they were playing some good music. I don't know. I didn't give them, I didn't look at them. They were just behind me. Yeah, don't make eye contact. Yeah, yeah. They gave us a nice little theme song for the block. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then we kept on pushing. But um, I, I respect the hustle though. I mean, it takes a lot to, you know, sure get ignored and said no to every day and keep going. But obviously, it's, you know, I'm sure people are used to it here, but um, respect because I couldn't do it. Yeah, but, sure. Um, Cartagena, the wall city though, I, I do like it. I do like the vibe there. Um, that old colonial feel that, again, you'll see in a lot of Caribbean countries. You'll see it in, in like, uh, like NOLA, like New Orleans, they have like a little area like that. Mm -hmm. um, I do love that style. It's like someone said dude, yesterday. It was like, yo, I feel like we just back in time or something like that. Yeah. Someone was like, um, it was like this place just got stuck in time. So walking through the streets of the old wall city, literally just seeing like, you know, the colorful buildings. Get seventy, right? Yeah, get yeah, get seventy. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So the uh, the colorful buildings, the uh, street art, just the vibe of it. It just, it. I do like that. That was definitely my favorite part. Um, of, of Cartagena, so um, old San Juan vibes, like relatively cool old San Juan vibes. When Haiti, I was saying like in you know, Okai, like it gives that similar vibe. So that real, um, that energy or just that architecture is really beautiful. Two days ago, um, so we got here in Cartagena on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we did island hopping. That that was like you know, almost basically an all day thing. That was really fun. Um, getting to see again the different islands. We had. Uh, First one was a fort, second one was a party island, no? Fort, fort Beach. Fort Beach. Yeah, fort, we, for, yeah, first one was a fort, second one was a beach, third one was uh, the, the party, the party, party yeah, the fort. and the fourth one was, you know, we got food yeah. and everything. And so that was really cool. We got to meet some, some dope people, of course. This is our, we're two for two, uh, meeting New Yorkers uh, on yeah. vacation. Specifically from the Bronx, so <laughs> uh, for sure, sure. So that that's been pretty fun. I guess some things don't change, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was a really fun day overall. Um, yeah. yeah, burn, peel, people get peel. Yeah, I got burned from that there. Yeah. Um, I think my shoulders peeling from that. The sun is like beaming here, which, yeah. is, which is wild. Yeah. The, the weather, that's the thing. Like. I, don't know, I thought I thought, uh, thought like Columbia was just gonna be hot the entire time, and like people say that like oh people have that misconception like no like Medellin and Bogota kind of those are in the mountains so those are cool and Cartagena is along the like, Caribbean Sea so it's like that is hot. Cartagena did not touch seventy once. It did not go below eighty five. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Medellin was uh, sixty five at night, like sixties at some yeah, point at cool. night into nice the cool. morning. Here was ninety five when we landed. 88 at night. <laughs> the lowest it got was 83. So everything was hot. Like, yeah. So. You turn off the AC, it's, your room's gonna be boiling. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was cool though. Cool experience. I definitely come back. I do want to do Medellin again, and I want to see like Bogota for a little bit. But 
Um, I do, do, I would like to come back. So shout out to Columbia. Good food. I like the food, even though it's rice and beans. <laughs> and, rice and, and chicken and, and fish, fish or pork. <laughs> rice, beans, beans, chicken, and fish, fish pork. Um, which is kind of noble, you know, being from New York, we already yeah. have that diversity. Yeah. So it's not that much of a shift, but yeah. it is, I do know that, well, we could tell the, the food is a lot more fresh. Yeah. yeah. Than that, yeah. Natural like, lemonade. Yeah. Hair mist in some places. Uh, but Blended um, lemon zest. Like yeah. with ice, ice, and, ice and those are refreshing on yeah. a hot day. Yeah. 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 That first place when we landed was, uh, to me, it was the best lemonade I've ever had. You're going to go get some after this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go get some. Um, but yeah. And driving, driving here was, uh, that joint is, and everyone, I'm sure people who do travel, you know, to, uh, if you're not from the States and you go travel back home and everything, you know what I'm about to say, but driving <laughs> is literally, there's no rules, you just react, right? So, you know, um, it, it's intense. Everybody's playing chicken. You got two cars driving. In America, we have the, uh, the other two. sides of the roads, but you got two cars really driving near each other, almost hitting one another. Then, then no lanes. No, no lanes. respects the lanes. No respects the lanes. Lanes are suggestions. Lanes are suggestions. suggestions. Safety second. Really? Safety <laughs> second. We had two Uber drivers who damn near ran people off. Of their motorcycles just yeah. almost ran them over just because they but were. But we got to where we stuff. needed to go. And no accidents. No accidents. It was yeah. crazy. But yeah, it would never work where we're from. But here, it, it's a little intense, but it works. <laughs> so, um, any last thoughts? No. Any of the set out, last thoughts? No. For only $60. Oh. You have the time of your life. Not to Food, yeah. drink, <laughs> a good time, and good entertainment. Vibe, and entertainment. entertainment. Just for a low price of $60. Shout out to Columbia. USD. USD. Um, price of 2K. Mm -hmm. Price of 2K. But yeah, you mentioned um, this is the second time that we met people from New York, right? So one yeah. thing that I wanted to talk about was. Uh, Connecting with people. I think the word, I'm going to just say the word of the trip was personal, right? So that's something that I really uh, want to talk briefly about um, in terms of, if we're going to talk about niche, young professionals, right? That's something that, that, that's what we can relate to. So for young professionals looking to connect with people, looking to build a relationship with people, whether it's on vacation, whether it's just making friends at home, at school, um, at work, or, you know, networking, just building relationships with people. Yeah. Um, what does it mean to be personable? What does that actually look like? So that's something that we have had a conversation before. So I kind of just want to get your takes on that. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to you? How do you, um, how do you do it yourself? Because granted, we all have different personalities. If you want to see, I'm the most social, extrovert, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'd say probably I'm number two, even number three. But we all have our own ways of I'd be all still of making a different way of making a connection with place. Exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. So and still just as fruitful. So exactly, yeah. right? So um, this is actually perfect, right? Because I think this is probably like the spectrum of type of like personality that you're gonna get, literally, right? For the most part. So everyone has their own little way of doing it. Their own je ne sais quoi, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna start with you, Alan. Right? What does it mean to you? And then um, how do you how do you go about it? I think, so what does networking mean to me or being personable? Being, being personable, personable yeah. means to me. I think no matter how shy or introverted you are, being personable means, you know, kind of being in the moment and being social in that moment. Even though that's not your personality, you know, you have to talk to people throughout life, if, if you know, just to explore different experiences. Um, and I think part of that is so being social in the moment and being sincerely interested in the other person. Um, because, you know, you can just ask questions and, you know, go down a checklist. But if you're actively listening to what they're saying and, and you're, you're showing interest, asking questions and, and, and fully participating in the moment, then 
that connection is going to be a lot stronger than if you just ask generic questions that like everyone asks, oh, where are you from? And then, oh, yeah. that, that's needed. But yeah. after that, yeah. then like, yeah. what do you like to do? And then yeah. different things like that. Um, what are your experiences like? You know, just kind of taking it to another level than just the surface level questions that are typically yeah. asked. Yeah. Um, and just being, I get, it, it's hard to explain it, but I would say kind of having awareness of, you know, social awareness of- Reading the room. Exactly. Read the room. exactly of, you know, did, did someone like that comment I made? How did they react to that? Can I keep going down that route? Like kind of gauging um, who you're talking to, you know, obviously the person's age, plays a role, their gender. Um, you kind of have to take that into consideration when, when talking to someone, if someone's older or younger than you. Yeah. Um, you know, so kind of just seeing where you land um, in that interaction. Yeah. Um, 100%, right? And for me, I guess, for me, I kind of said it before, right? To me, it's just, I feel like I'm just doing my social duty. And the best way I can uh, give that example is like when we're on the boat, right? You have 20 people on the boat, we're pretty much like, all next to each other, right? Like in this confined space, you have to talk to people, right? Like if you're gonna, if you want to have a good time on this trip, yeah, you can just like sit and be quiet the entire time. But especially for, this is from a social perspective, right? The more extroverted. So for people who can relate to being more like, you know, out there. Um, for me, it's like, I'm not gonna sit here and just stare at people for the next like six hours. Like I'm going to have to talk to you about something, right? So that's, that's the, burning desire in me, I'm like, I have to talk to someone, right? Yeah. And if I'm going to do it, I, it has to be a genuine conversation, and like you said, being interested in that person and what they say. Um, if we're gonna talk about technique, it's just like finding, like if you're gonna ask this, the first is the generic set of questions, right? Where are you from? What's your name? What do you do? How long are you here? What have you done already, like while we're here? Yeah. Those are great conversation starters. But it's not just like throwing those conversation starters out. It's like you have to listen to what they say and then being able to build on what they said, right? What stood out and then building off of that. What, how long have you guys been here? We've been here for a few days. What things have you done? Oh, we went to this restaurant, this bar, we visited this site. Now pick one of those things and kind of build on that. Yeah. How was it? How was the food? What was around there? Do you do anything before? Do you recommend, right? That's how you start building a conversation. And you kind of just listen to what they said. Oh, we're from England. Oh, England? I've never been. How is it over there? Yeah. I've been anywhere else. Blah, blah, blah. That's how you just build a conversation and then it, it goes on from there, you know? Sure. Um, obviously, it's different. And then, again, like reading the room, knowing when, you know, like we said, if everyone's like kiki keen, everyone's laughing, making jokes, okay, now it's the time to be a little bit more like you can throw some jokes out. But then once everyone starts going quiet or like, you know, no one's talking right now, then, you know, it's okay to be quiet. It's okay to be able to just read the room and be like, all right. Silence is not the worst thing. Yeah. Silence to me, in, in, catch a breath. I always say there's intimacy in silence, right? Like, we're not necessarily just between one or two people, but even in, in a group, like, that's just how conversations ebb and flow. There's times where everyone's talking over each other and trying to get a joke off and we're listening to music, having a good time. And then there's times where it's like, you know, we're just quiet right now. Just enjoy being in the moment, yeah, moment, you know? And then if you say, you know, one small comment or make one small little joke and it builds up again, boom. But it's just knowing how to read the room and when you do that and you have real conversations with people, you seem generally interested, you'd be surprised and you can build a relationship, whether it's just for that day, right? Not saying these are all gonna be my best friends after and we're gonna hang out, no, but like, for that moment, for that setting, you build a connection with someone, you have a shared experience, and then, and then you move on. Um, so it's, part of it is like tact, part of it is IQ, like emotional intelligence, social intelligence. Um, the podcast does help though, I'm not gonna lie. Getting good at asking people questions. That's something that I've gotten better at and I know myself. Even in public, when we're just hanging with people, sometimes I feel like I'm in a little podcast episode. You know, I'm just asking people questions. I'm, Cause I'm generally interested, I don't know. And I can build off of it. But again, this, I mean, this him here, right here, this this is him, like, when he's talking to people, this yeah. is outside, like, talking to people. I talk a lot. You know, so, um, 
But, but you, for me, you're yeah, this is the ex exact opposite. So for me, like, you know, he talked about that silence. To me, I love that. You know, like, a lot of the times when you're traveling, going on buses and whatnot, you know, I, here and there you talk to people, like, on the boat and everything, you talk, but, you know, um, I found myself oftentimes just either falling asleep on the bus and everything, or just listening to music, or just kind of just doing my own thing. He uh, said something about charging up, right? For me, that's my way of charging up. Um, quieter, obviously more reserved. Introverts, for the most part, everything, all the talking and stuff is done up here, thinking and, you know, processing everything, all the information. So, you know, I walk in someplace, I'm not, you know, obviously once the highs and introductions are done and everything, you kind of, uh, I kind of want to just sit there and, you know, read the room, gauge, figure out the people, whether it be from what they're doing, how they're sitting, uh, just whatever little mannerisms you might have. You know, I, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody who's like, like, like me, but yesterday, for example, on our way to the mud volcano, uh, immediately, immediately, they started talking to us and saying, introduce yourselves. That was cool, but I didn't like that personally. Like I mean, I barely sat down. I literally sat down for two seconds. And I started, you know, ah, no, you know, same thing. <laughs> same thing. First day we got here, you know, we went into some some store with uh, bags and souvenirs and everything. Five people crowded me immediately, and I told them, you know, give me a second, back up. Didn't even get to look at anything, you know. So that to me, that's where my like. It doesn't, I don't like that, you know, you got to give me a second to get comfortable in the situation, figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to interact with these people and whatnot, you know. Um, but when you do get into it and whatnot, once those surface level conversations, for me personally, when I talk to somebody and, you know, you go through where you're from, what you do, uh, you know, interest and whatnot, I don't, I don't really like to sit here and talk too much about people's, like, uh, the seriousness of, the, of everything. I like to figure out what their interests are, what do they do, like stuff they like because for me that's I have an easier time um, talking about that then gearing that towards you know whether you want to get more serious if you'd like or or whatever but for me it's you know once we go through that it's like okay in my head I have a checklist okay they like this they like this they like this it's not up there for example right if I'm talking to somebody and if I ask about their interests and the first thing they do is bring up, oh, I watch sports and do this, that, and third. Nope, next. You know, like, I, I watch sports and everything, but, you know, sometimes it's not like, that's not what's going to get me to sit here and have a 20 minute conversation. I'm that's not going to talk. Connect with I'm you. not going to connect with you. I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about your fantasy league or whatever the heck, because I don't do that. That's not, right? You know, we talk about playoff basketball and all that stuff. That's great. Um, but I just care more about other, you know, just more personal, relatable stuff. So if I don't find that, so what's that for you? Uh, I don't know. It's mm. really different for everybody, though. It's different. You know, it's not a set thing. But I do know it falls more in the realm of like, whether it be like I guess music or just like experiences you've had doing things or how something made you feel. You know, like. Um, Last night we were in, uh, was it last night in, in Medellin, where we went to that hostel and we... Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about, uh, more so like comparing where you live. So I, we met some, I met some people from uh, London and Bristol specifically. So we just started talking about, uh, you know, their holiday, call it holiday, so their vacation, how that is, how um, just life is and everything, like the differences between living in the UK and the US and whatnot. And I was... I was I told them, hey, I want to go home at nine, you know, because I, I, I didn't want to be out too late. And then I found a group of people to talk to. I stayed till 1030. So <laughs> they were out here really pissed at me. But that to me, like, that's just the perfect example. Like, if I can sit there and connect on something and continue to get to know you about just complete. Some people are, you know, I'm not going to be you know, boring, you know, let's be real. Some people are boring. And for me, it's like I don't have too much. I can't sit there and enforce a dead conversation. There have been many times I've spoken to people and they'll say something and I just stop talking. You know, I just nod my head or say anything. And you know, you, you know when you talk to people and they're kind of just looking past you and everything and I don't do that all the time, but I've caught myself doing that once in a while and everything. It's just not like, I don't want to sit here and be rude, you know, so that's why sometimes I may not personally sit here and engage with everybody because I know I'm personally not you are, you guys already know I have my facial expressions and everything so <laughs> I'm not 
not going to be able to, I'll, I'll be looking at Ben's and be like, yo, bro, can you just jump on this grenade real quick? <laughs> I'm trying to leave, you know? So that's me personally. But again, like, like we said in the beginning, once you do find that, once you do find that connection, whether it be in our, all our three different ways, it is very fruitful, I find, especially in my life. I, I, I tend to say, um, it's, I don't talk to a, a crazy quantity of people, but I do find that the quality of the conversation and the people I do end up with, you know, they always stay in my life for a reason, or I met them for a reason, or we had that conversation for a reason. So I, I do like that more. I, I much rather prefer talking to two people out of a thousand and living with that experience for the rest of the uh, trip or whatever. So. I, I think a big thing, um, building, connecting with people, relationships, right? Networking. Um, a lot of it comes down to self-awareness, right? If you know yourself and know what you like, it will make it easier to find things to connect to someone else about, right? Um, Alan, I think you said some of the, the best way to connect with people is through language and food, right? Yeah. I think having go, go to conversation starters, go to topics that you can talk to someone about that you can easily connect with, right? And maybe trying to gear that conversation towards that. You kind of pick their brain a little bit. So for example, right, oh, I'm from, you know, met someone from Guatemala. I've never been to Guatemala, right? But I, I'm not gonna let the conversation die right there, but I like to travel, I like the Spanish language, I've been to Central America. So then you can start That's talking. That's where the interest comes in, you know? It's like, it's not just some people are, oh, That's never nice. been there. That's nice. Conversation's Ooh. dead. No. But, yeah. And then from there, you, if you're generally interested in the person, or, in, or interested in trying to get to know the person, oh, Guatemala, I've never been there. You know, what is there to do there? How long have you been there? Oh, I've heard that they have really nice mountains. Have you been? Oh yeah, I've been to the mountains. They do this and the third. Oh, that sounds exciting. Are you adventurous? Oh yeah, I'm pretty adventurous. I like to, you know, hike on mountains and hike and go do this. Oh, hike? You can hike over here? Boom. Next, then you go from talking to Guatemala to, hey, I used to swing off, you know. Hiking on bare mountains. The hiking on bare mountains. Yeah, you know what I mean? I used to swing off here and I used to jump off of this ledge over there and then all of a sudden now, you're, you and it goes back to reading the room. You see how they respond. You see that they start to get a little more excited. Maybe they start to get excited about it. It's the now eyes. You, you see the, their eyes have a glow usually. Now you know. Okay, this is a topic that this is something that this person enjoys that I can now connect with them about. You stay on that topic a little bit, and then you start finding them. Okay, what else do you like to do? Right. For me, I think something I found easy, or which is a pretty go-to thing, is to ask people about their travels. Right. When you traveling. A lot of times, you're meeting other people who like to travel. So it's easy for me to just go like, okay, where else have you been? What other places have you been at? What other activities have you done? A lot of people like to talk about that stuff, especially we're all traveling. They like to talk about that. That's easy to connect about, right? So we can go from, in this country, I did this, and then you can go from language, you can talk language, culture, food, you know, experience. That's a whole conversation. And if you want to actually get to know them, think about things that make you human. Do you have a family? Like, you know, how many siblings do you have? <laughs> yeah. no, like, for real. You, like, you man, you know. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Y'all got, you got siblings. You have pets. Oh. Simple things. You have siblings. Do you have pets? Blah, blah, blah. All right? Yesterday we brought up dogs. And then, you know, their eyes lit up. Oh, I have two dogs. You know, they're, they're the best Ooh. things in my life. Blah, blah, blah. You can, that's something yeah. that we all share. Right, so finding those little topics that you can connect. I don't have a dog, but I love dogs, right? But I can still talk to someone about the dogs that they love and have a genuine conversation about that. And then you're gonna stand out a little bit more than just being like, I don't know, what's your favorite color, red? Oh, cool. All right. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you know? It's like, all right, nice, that's that's nice. So it just, again, it's, it's being able to, to me, I guess the biggest thing, and we do this on the podcast, you ask someone a question, they give you a long answer, you're not gonna remember everything that they said. Pick something that stands out and, you know, carry it on to the next question or to the next topic. Yeah. And then that's how you can really um, and bond. And then lastly, just don't be a creep. <laughs> don't be a weirdo. Just don't be a weirdo. Part of that, I don't know if you can really teach that, some of it you can. I think you can kind of tell people like, some, hey, don't do this, I, don't I, do that. But, but some, I, some people are just, they just don't, some people I've learned have a, especially in the last year, year and a half, some people have a severe lack of common sense, 
common it, sense is not it's common. It's not so, common. So, it's, so it, it, it's, a gray area. Yeah, it's, it's a gray area. It's a gray area. But, yeah. but yeah, something as simple as, as that, right? <laughs> I'm cool with Edom, so then like I can put my hand on here. But like if it's someone you just met and you're doing that, like context, <laughs> they, they might be. I'll tell you right now, I'm not talking to you. Like we've, we've, like, we've seen, like, you know, yeah. going out at night um, here because you know going to bars or, or a club or whatever. We've seen like people just be overly assertive, assertive with someone that they just met and that just rubbed off the wrong way. So like definitely, like you said, read the room and don't be a creep. Like you should, if I just met you, I should not be like touching you and, and grabbing men, on you. Men, this is for you. No, <laughs> I'm being very honest. Yeah, yeah. men is for you. And the aggressive women, right? Because Bensky was a victim. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, just be aware of like, you know, if, if the person's moving and then making faces, first of all, you should have been doing that to begin with, but like, take the hint, you know? Making, um, reading body language, right? It's like, that, and to me, it's also like, yo, don't, this is a whole person. This is a, another human being. The same way you wouldn't like if someone did something to you or whatever, don't do that to someone else. Respect their boundaries, respect everything. Like, yeah. They're a person, bro. They're not a piece of meat, not a not something you own, not not a form of entertainment for the night or whatever. Nah, they're a person, they have feelings or they might feel a certain way, like nah. So Nah, for real. You can't go from A to B or A to Z, you know, in terms of comfortability that quickly, you know. Certain people might be able to because they know, like we said, how to read the room and like, you know, certain people might get there quicker. You know, they might take those quicker steps. But other people, you need to, like like we said, it's that self-awareness. You need to know where your strengths and, and weaknesses are and slowly work your way into there. If you know you have a great personality and you can shine, then don't rush and show that. We haven't been friends for years. You know, you have to calmly give us the easier way, easier into, way into it. You don't just force your, you know, it's a lot of dudes to do that. So, and sense is key. Um, but, yeah, for real. And, like... This sounds kind of weird, but you kind of have to know who. We talk about this like only sermon, so many personality types out there. That's right? where the judging comes in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I feel like there's so many. There are only so many personality type personality types out there, and like I feel like we're going back to self awareness. You have to know, like, if you're in a group of friends or even by yourself, you have to know like what kind of person you are, what kind of like friend you are in a group, so to speak, right? Like, for me, I can be more of the person to walk around the room. Whether this is, like, on vacation, this could just be, like, a networking event at work, right? I don't have any problem working the room, walking from this group to there, to that person, to that person. Let's keep finding our friends for vacation. That's what it is. Right? <laughs> You're right? But then, you know, someone like Eden might be better, like, hey, let me go grab a seat. Like, there's someone sitting down over there. Let me just grab a seat right there and sit next to the person and start talking to that person. Right? And then you can make a genuine connection just... Sitting, sitting down, not being all like walk around boisterous, blah blah blah, right? But for me personally, yeah, maybe I can do that too. But also, like, I want to. There's a lot of people here. I want to meet the yeah. people here, right? Yeah, like I want to walk around and meet the people here, right? But you know, if that doesn't work for Edom, then that's not something Edom should be doing. I'll be fine with the one you person know? in the corner, man. Exactly. You know, for me, I can do one person in the corner, but I want to walk around. You know, Alan, I feel like maybe you're a mix of both. Or you yeah, speak for yourself, yeah. I don't want to speak for you. No, I definitely think I'm a mix. It depends on, on my mood, you know, how many shots I've had around <laughs> the night. Um, but not for sure. Like, I definitely find comfort in, you know, just talking to one person, kind of like in that scenario that like you said for Edom, or, you know, hopping from group to group and just meeting other people as well. So it depends on what my mood for the night. Yeah. Socially, I get tired after a while if, if I need to entertain one person, another person, another person. Nah, it's just, it's really tiring. It's easier to work with a small group of like one to two people. You know, we have one connected conversation. You know, when you have a group of too many people, too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, eventually something's gonna clash. Not everybody's gonna be able to talk about the same thing or be on the same page or whatever. So me personally, I do enjoy that one-on-one -on -one interaction. And many times, honestly, uh, you mentioned last year, after a while, talking to a lot of people, you get tired. You get very tired. I get tired even sometimes, especially if it's, if I try Bensky's approach, I find, 
I'll be exhausted within five, 10 minutes. Like, you know, there have been many times he and I have been in a group talking to people. He's doing the talking and I'm standing there looking around or just keeping quiet or nodding my head whenever everybody else nods their head. So I realized like that doesn't work for me. At that point, I'm just wasting my time and thinking about what are we gonna eat tonight, you know? <laughs> so uh, that one-on-one -on -one conversation, I often find, you know, I give 100% of myself to it. I don't feel tired after, you know, because uh, I'll tell you after that night, I was after, you know, uh, last night in Medellin, I could have kept talking with other people and everything, but yeah, I, I felt really refreshed. It was just a great interaction and everything. Same way you feel about, you know, talking, um, or whatever your equivalent is, right, I should say. Yeah. So that's me personally. Like, I can't do that. I can't do it your way. I'll get tired very quick, you know, yeah. it's just ineffective. And, you know, why don't you bring, you mentioned the convention, right? So like, it's, these are skills, transferable skills that you can use in different situations, right? Being social, talk with uh, I guess going back to being social side note, right? There's a difference, were you saying? There's a difference between, just because you're social doesn't make you personable, right? Just because you're social, you're a social butterfly and, and you can be the person to walk around and talk to everybody, doesn't necessarily mean that you're personal and people want to talk to you, right? Because those people tend to be looking for or figuring out a way to talk about what they want to talk about in conversation and then like, hijack it instead of sharing the it's the moment or with other people and that's yeah that's not when it's too much and it's that's like i, I don't want to be around that person you know um so there's a difference like you can you can be social and not personable or you know you can be social and still be someone that you want to connect with um going back to the convention right these are these are skills that like we were saying today like there's Social skills that you're practicing here like on vacation are the same skills we'll be using at these uh, NABA and Alpha conventions, um, you know, or even just like networking events for work, you know, um, you're at a networking event and especially those conventions when you have hundreds and thousands of people at the career fair or in the hallway, maybe you see a professional or you see someone that you want to speak to, a manager, someone that you want to speak to, maybe you see them with a group of people around them, right? That's something that they talk about in that, but like how to get into that circle, but doing it like properly, right? Yeah. If there's someone that you want to speak to, maybe they have three or four people that they're, that they're already entertaining or speaking to, and you want to get into that circle, right? Let's do it with some tact. You're not gonna just be, mm -hmm. hey guys, right? No, you're not gonna do that. But you see that? All right, you walk up, maybe you stand behind someone because you're not necessarily in the circle yet. You listen to what the conversation is about, right? You listen to what they're talking about. Are they talking about work-related things or are they talking about just whatever, like fun, entertainment, whatever. And then that one, that's when it goes back to listen to what they're saying and then you can pick up on something. Stop, think, right, before you speak. But then also, if you want some tact, it's like, okay, let me pick up on something that, again, I can relate to, I can speak to, and then maybe, maybe just make a comment. If you're a funnier person, make a joke about it. If people start laughing, and now you can kind of make your way into the circle. If you're more reserved or quiet, maybe you can kind of be like, find one person that you can be like, oh, hey, like I do that too, blah, 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 right? And then maybe they'll bring you into the circle. Or maybe, you know, like you just finding that, listening to that conversation and finding something, and then boom, once you get into that circle, you know, you, you do you do your thing. Is it talking to the main person in the group who's there, or is it finding someone else you know in that group that you're trying to trying to speak to? But it's not doing too much to try and bring all the attention is me or trying to bring all the attention to yourself. And then it's also not not saying anything, and then no one knows that you're there because then now you didn't do anything. You're just awkward. The awkward person standing behind who looks like they want to get into the group, but they're not saying anything, and that doesn't help either. Now you're just like a weirdo, right? So it's just back to self-awareness, who you are, and being able to read, read the room. It's important, you know? You think about sometimes, it kind of sounds obvious and kind of common, but from our experience, I feel like we've seen a lot of, we've seen it done wrong more times than we've seen it done right, yeah. you know? Um, and for the people who do it right to network or connect with people, you see that they stand, that, out. They stand out, right? And not necessarily stand out in terms of attention, but stand out in terms of like memorable, memorable, you know? Which is sad, because you would think that it would be the other way around, but you know, hey. Yeah. So, I don't know, all in all, it's just like, it does take practice, and 
if we're going to talk about conventions, you know, professional, professionalism, whether you're a student or you're, you're working, um, you know, that's why we have networking events at work because even people at work say like, hey, like, I still have a hard time networking sometimes, you know? And just because you're older or you're, you're already working doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to, right? And some people know how to do it really well. Some people know how to, you know, if I'm getting here for a mission, I'm looking just for a, a LinkedIn, I'm looking just for an Instagram, right? I'm coming here looking for a business card, knowing how to find the person, get related, you know, find that connection, get that contact or whatever your goal is, and then bounce, right? That's really effective, and that's gonna take you, if you're looking for a job, if you're just looking for friends, if you're looking for a relationship, right? It's gonna, it's gonna take you far. So it does take practice. You have to put yourself in those situations and kind of see like, Again, who are you in those situations? Are you more of the quiet, reserved person? All right, cool. Now, next time you know how to navigate that situation, you know, it's not avoiding it. You're not gonna learn by avoiding. You have to, it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error. Maybe you might say a joke that doesn't land well. Maybe you might make a comment that, you know, people don't like, but then again, reading like, okay, they didn't like that joke. All right, let me not say that again. Yeah. Maybe you stay quiet for a little bit and let the conversation change, you know? Or, yeah, they like that joke, all right, yeah, yeah, let me say, let me, let's, let's keep go. going, let's keep yeah. this going, you know, there's going to always be a bigger laugh, yeah. all right, <laughs> so, um, but, but definitely, uh, to that point, because that just made me think of something, be yourself, you know, if, yeah. yourself, if you are the corny person that makes jokes that no one laughs at, too bad, <laughs> too bad, <laughs> double down, no, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't so change you're not yourself, weird. as long as you're yeah, not weird, weird. yeah, but, yeah. Don't make people uncomfortable. Don't make them uncomfortable. But yeah. that's that's different. But yeah, you know, just still be yourself. Bro. Exactly. Yeah. Don't because that adapt. Yeah. But be yourself. Exactly. And how do you know when you're making people uncomfortable, though? I I don't think so. In a regular interaction, you will likely not make someone uncomfortable unless you're talking about something inappropriate. You know, you know something like sexual or whatever. I feel like. But like, like I in, sorry. In a, sorry in a, in a regular like. like platonic or whatever general conversation with somebody, you're not going to make them feel uncomfortable. Unless you say something political, right, sexual, uh, something racial, something, uh, you know, hot topics and, yeah. you know, religion, whatever, whatever, like yeah. all of those touchy topics, then maybe, but generally speaking, you're not going to make someone uncomfortable. I, I think, uh, if, let's, say, let's pretend you already broke the ice and everything. I feel when you're talking and you find the topic or you make someone uncomfortable, Usually the yeahs go from yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the one word answer type thing, right? Yeah. So it just gets dead and yeah. dead and and you you can for me like you can imagine you can see like the the hope and everything just leaving that person like yeah. the just the I don't know for me it's, it's evident you can see it in their face if you're really like paying attention and stuff you can see what it looks like the energy should shift immediately and then. Try to save yourself. <laughs> That's the emotional intelligence, right? Reading body language, understanding people's reactions to things, right? And you can kind of tell if we're talking about, you know, if we're talking about this subject or we're talking about it and you see the person's kind of getting excited, they're smiling, they want to do all mm -hmm. that. Okay, then now you're good. But yeah, if you're trying to ask someone some questions, right? You're trying to talk to a girl, right? Hey, Shorty, what's up, right? And you're trying to talk to her and she's giving you those one word answers and a little bit like standoffish and it feels a little bit like you're doing too much, then yeah, maybe this isn't the person for you or maybe you're not doing it right. And you know, go, go somewhere else, you know? You don't want to force it because then now it's like, now you're really going to be making that person uncomfortable. Yeah. And some people won't, a lot of people won't tell you when you're making them feel uncomfortable, right? In social settings, like if you're being a weirdo, some people oftentimes won't won't out there to say you're being weird. Stop. So that's something that you kind of have to gauge and be aware of, you know. Yeah. Um, how do you know if you're being weird? If you don't know, I don't know, ask your friends, yo. Someone will tell you if you're weird or all. like if you haven't. I don't know, like, if you're having trouble making friends with, with, with people or having trouble connecting with people, I'm not, you. <laughs> not that you're, that you're, you're weird, weird, but like, hey, like that, you, yeah. you can kind of gauge, like, maybe I'm having trouble connecting with people, you know, or really building relationships with people, like, that's something that, you know, you can think back and you can probably tell, you know, you can, I think you probably know, a lot of people know, like, hey, I have a hard time making friends, right? Well, all right, if you acknowledge it, then 
That's something you just have to work on. Dive into that. that. Why? Yeah, like, why? Ask yeah, yeah, work on that. And, like, I mean, this is going to be basically my final thoughts. Um, yeah. For introverts out there, um, definitely, like, like you said, yeah, like both of them said, you have to do the work and you have to actually go out there and put yourself in those situations. I've been hearing this phrase for like the past, mm. oh, oh, like eight years of my life or so. Like, yo, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Like, you have to get comfortable. You have being to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Obviously, like I'm still trying to. Figure, I don't. I do not have that figured out at all. Obviously, but. You know, there are moments where, you know, I tend to go out when he goes out, but there are times where I will go to a happy hour. I will go to do something on my own and everything, and I will have my own social interaction. I will work on it. You know, it's, build, you're, you're working on your craft, and say, right? So you do have to get out and, you know, do something. You can't sit at home, be on the internet all day, sleeping, playing with your pets, or whatever the heck you might do at home, you know? So you have to get out there and actually see those one-on-one -on -one situa like, one -on -one situations and actually see how people are living and doing things and whatnot because what's on the internet, what's on Instagram and all that stuff, it's not real, you know, TikTok, all that stuff is not real. People in the comments, they are doing the same thing you're doing at home, behind their computer, in bed, whatever, chatting nonsense, saying whatever just to get a reaction. You know, we all know what goes crazy is the divisive stuff on, on, on social media and whatnot. So that can't be the fuel you use to go ahead and have a social interaction with somebody. You have to go out and actually experience that. So. I think, uh, I guess, final thoughts, right? Um, what is important and what's a, like a helpful tool, again, whether you're a social person or an introvert, I think wait, wait. And switch up your routine. Please go and switch up like whatever you're doing, what, like to the, I don't, I have a hard time connecting with people. Ask yourself why and then go make a subtle change if you can. Go make, oh, well, you should go make a subtle change in something do something different you may have to change yourself you know obviously you know you're not all meant to be alone but you may have to change something about yourself if you find you're making people weird like weirded out uncomfortable or whatever you have to change something about your approach let's say you know so all right so to add on to that right um I guess one thing that I do and I think which is helpful you have to have go-to stories or go-to like interesting facts, something that you can draw from regularly, right? Especially if you're going to be in a situation where you're meeting a lot of people, right? And you don't want to sit here and blah, blah, blah and go so deep. So you need something quick that you can kind of go to or you can kind of draw that can be a conversation starter about yourself. Something interesting, something funny, some stories that you can draw. And it has to be appropriate per situation. Going back to when I'm on vacation, right? Um, because I like to travel and a lot of people here like to travel, I have my travel stories ready off the top of my head. Um, and that's like pretty easy and that's something that we can connect with. Where have I been to recently? What have I done in those places recently? That's off the top of my head. One of those stories, travel stories, is going to reside, resonate with somebody. If we end up, if we stop talking about travel, another thing I like to talk about, entertainment, like movie, like movies and TV shows. The most recent movies and TV shows that I like are on the top, on the tip of my, like top of my head for me to be ready to talk about. Even if we don't end up watching the same things, but I'm still gonna be like, oh, I like this movie, this movie, that movie, this genre, that genre, that genre. We'll find something. Is this, is, is it going to be food? Okay, I kind of know like the best food I had recently, maybe right. Recently, I had a really good burger at this spot over there. Oh yeah, you should go check that out. We're here on vacation. Everyone's like, oh, I had really good food at this spot over there. Right, something ready, and it, it goes to networking too, with your elevator pitch when you're networking, being able to talk about yourself quickly, and and being able to talk about the interesting parts about you quickly, being able to talk about say what you do at work quickly, being able to have some stories off the top of your head that you can go to. That's you being you, you know, not like you say to be yourself, right? Something that's you, you can get off quickly. Conversation started. But then also switch it up. You don't want to be the same story all the time, all the time, all the time, right? And knowing what situations call call for what. A lot of it is like it happens so quickly too in these social situations. Like you just have to be able to quickly adjust, quickly, quickly see. And again, you're gonna make mistakes. Some things are not every situation. Like I, even though yeah, I'm a social one. Like it comes through trial and error because I've made bad jokes, right? Because I've said things that's like, oh okay, like nah, I probably shouldn't have. 
right? Or because I, I felt like, oh, maybe I was talking to this person a little bit too much and they're not really the talkative type. It happens, right? But just being able to make that adjustment. So um, that's my final thoughts. Just like really read the room and like practice and have some go-to things that you, that you genuinely like, that you think that you can connect with someone. And that's a really good way to start building a relationship with someone. And just a helpful tip to piggyback off of the uh, interesting, like you said, vacation stories and whatnot. One thing that I try to do here and there is, uh, especially when I'm on vacation, is actually sit and reflect on your day, you, whether that be deep or not deep, but I saw a video somewhere the person said, hey, what I do is I think about one interest, interesting thing that happened to me during the day or an interesting story or something, you know, whether it be by yourself or you went out and, and had that interaction. It helps your memory and it helps you come up with something if you ever speak to somebody, you know, shortly after it happens. Alan? Uh, no. And Bill? Uh, be yourself. Um, if you're uh, first, first perspective. perspective. <laughs> if you're young, you have the rest of your life to, <laughs> to like, perfect this and yeah, yeah we're constantly growing yeah you know yeah, yeah. blueberries <laughs> <laughs> um shout out to gary yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, gary v. <laughs> um great source of entertainment but not seriously be yourself and you know and, and work with that right don't try to be someone else because that come that will easily come off um and yeah if you're more on the extroverted side you know you're outgoing you know become you know, talk about things that are relatable, right? With, with the other person, like you said, if, if you're talking about sports, you don't, you know, the other person may not really be, want to talk about that, just talk about generic things that you could still go personal. If you're more on the introverted side, uh, you know, just try to spark a conversation with one person, right? And, and it's as simple as, uh, hi, my name is Alan, you know, just a simple introduction if it gets awkward after that, it was nice meeting you. And just, just, just walk away, just walk away. And then, next person you meet, hi, my name is Alan, how are you? And then, if it dies out, walk away. <laughs> and then, next person you meet, you keep building on that. And, it's, it, and there's going to be awkward silences. Um, and I think that's what kind of, uh, you know, when I was in school and then the networking thing was, was kind of new to me, I was always anxious about like awkwardness in conversations. Um, specifically silences, um, but no, lean into that, you know, it's a, conversations like, like you guys said, are, there's going to be ebbs and flows, and that, that's part of it, so, um, no, definitely just be yourself, it's it's a journey, right, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and just constantly but keep learning. No, we want to sprint the marathon. <laughs> and he is the perfect example of our <laughs> side eye. Side eye. <laughs> Hey, so I hope I hope that's helpful to someone out there. Um, this is something that we're gonna have to talk about like occasionally, just especially as we grow as individuals, as we're learning, because we're still learning about ourselves and learning how to network and how to relate. So this is something that we're gonna have to touch back uh, time and time again, but. Um, and it, it just changes as you grow up too. Conversations kind of differ as you grow up. The same things that you're gonna be kiki kin about when you're in college, in school, or fresh out of college gonna be different maybe than when you're like older, like 20s or 30s. And some might be the same, you know, cause it might be relatable, right? Maybe, yeah. you know, if you always like talking about cartoons, you never know, you might find somebody who's older who likes to talk about cartoons. You never know, but you're only gonna find that out if you're trying to be personable, relatable, asking questions and doing all that. Um, so, I hope that's helpful um, to wrap up today's episode. Make sure you're following us on all platforms at Everybody Eat Show on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, again, thank you for everyone who's been checking up on us. We have some things uh, that we're planning in the uh, Hampton Roads area for the summer, so please be on the lookout for that. Um, episode clips will be back up on Instagram. Um, I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna have uh, some good things planned for the summer. Alan, thank you again for being our designated uh, I don't know special. I don't know what you want to call it. We gotta give you a title for that. But our go to <laughs> go to go to guest for the for the pod. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's it.
That's it. See you guys next time. Peace.